Hello everyone. We all want to invest in the stocks, but most of the time we have no idea whether or not now is a good time to buy. More often we end up in analyzing too much or we will make the situation more complex than it actually required. So here this video is for those kind of scenarios. Let's simplify with what we already know with couple of examples, one TCS and another Nifty. In this way we can cover both stock and index analysis. Let's do the basics correct like the professional investor. I mean most of us most of the time in the stock market we heard this age old statement buy low and sell high. But what does that really mean? When we can consider the stock price is low, 1 rupee per share, 100 rupees per share. Actually there is no absolute perfect answer for those kind of questions. However, there are the ways at least we can gauge an index price or a stock price that how much it's an expensive by using something called multiples. Basically, these multiples can help us to figure it out how much we are paying for those particular stocks or an index with respect to its underlying business. I mean, for example, let's Google such a stock like well Reliance Industries. Then we end up with a series of search results as well as some basic details about that particular stock. In there we have the stock open price, market capitalization and dividend yield but also list something called the PE ratio of the company. Here the PE ratio is one of the example for what we call it as multiples. A ratio that compares the stock price to some fundamental number. Generally speaking, the higher the multiple, the more expensive the stock is what we want to buy. For example, think that we are shopping in the supermarket for rice, wheat or dal. I mean, it's difficult to compare the total prices with each other since the quantity we get is different for each item. But if you look the same things at the price per kg, then we can easily compare each item with each other. Like which one is expensive and what value of nutrients we get for the money we pay. Multiples work in a similar way. It allows us to compare the price of the stock to the underlying fundamentals. Here now there are hundreds of different multiples that investors can use EV by EBITDA, price to book value etc etc. Some of the multiples are sector specific for example CASA ratio, current account to savings account. It's very specific to banking sector. Whereas mostly others are broader in nature and each carries a different implication. The PE ratio which stands for the price to earnings ratio is one of the most straightforward and popular one. It's easy enough to calculate since we just take the stock price and divide it by the company's earnings per share. For example, let's take TCS. It got approximately 365 crores and 93 lakhs shares outstanding, each of which were trading out the price of 3,210 rupees per share on 19th June. And last year their net income was 42,303 crore rupees. So if we calculate using all those, we will get the P ratio. Here I don't want to do it, so I will take the direct value from money control. TCS stocks P ratio is 27.88. Hereafter are the important bits. The PE ratio what we saw in the website or what we supposed to calculate is known as trailing PE because we are calculating it using the historical information. It basically represents how much as an investor we are willing to pay per rupee of the company's profits. As of June 19th for TCS, investors were paying the price equal to approximately 27.8 times of the company's profit. So the trailing PE helps us to understand how much we are paying for that particular stock for the present value. But it does have its own disadvantage. I mean the biggest one being that it is backwards looking. Whereas stock market is the forward looking one. We want to know what's the future for the company where we invest. For example, if a company is expected to release a new product, entering into a new market or improving their operations in the future, then that particular stock will likely to trade higher PE ratio. Something that the trailing one wouldn't take that into account or it won't tell us since it just uses the past earnings and that won't explain why the stock is trading at higher price today. Because of that, professional investors don't use the trailing one. Instead, they always use the forward multiples. In this case, it's forward PE ratio which divides the stock price by how much the company is expected to make next year. For example, let's say we know now that this year 
TCS is expanding in Europe in the non-English speaking countries like Portugal and Spain. And as a result, including that and others, if we see the moneycontrol.com pro, their analysts predicted that they are expecting TCS earnings to increase approximately 12.2% to little over 47,300 crore rupees in the present financial year. Here, I mean they gave the band. Worst case, it expects to reach 44,700 crores and for the best case to reach 50,700 crores. For simplification, we can take the in-between average value 47,300 crores net profit. Thus, this will translate into 129 rupees earnings per share for FY 2024. Similarly, for FY 2025, it will be 145 rupees earnings per share. So, for that earnings, if we calculate the forward PE ratio for the present price, then for the FY 2024 possible earnings, I mean at the end of March 2024, it will be 24.88. And for FY 2025 possible future earnings, the forward P ratio will be 22.13. Now we got two numbers, 24.88 and 22.13. Will it be cheap? How can we assess this? There are a couple of things we can do. First, how it's compared to industry. I mean, how it will compare to other similar IT companies. Here, TCS is way bigger than any other Indian IT companies as it got the market cap of over 11 lakh crore rupees. But still we want something to compare. So I took top 6 Indian IT companies. Those are the only ones that have market cap of over 1 lakh crore rupees. Anyway, for this top 6 companies, the median PE ratio is 22.24 and the average PE ratio is 24.26. So based on this, TCS is the second expensive stock after LNT Mindry compared to others. So, can we avoid TCS? Can we not buy? The answer is no. It could be due to different reasons why it trades higher P ratio. For example, see the return of equity and return of capital employed. TCS is way higher than others. Whereas LNT Mindry got very high sales growth. As we know, market always rewards efficiency and growth. In TCS case, it's efficiency. Also, it's the largest in Indian IT and world's second largest. In case of LNT, it's growth rate. In simple terms, always hear this word and note it somewhere. It's very, very important. The companies with high self-sustainable growth rate always trades at higher PE ratio. Again, repeating self-sustainable growth rate. How to calculate it and how to analyze that, it's a different topic. If you guys interested means, please let me know in the comment section so I can make a separate video about self-sustainable growth rate. Again, I don't want to go in detail and make it more complicated. There are simple ways that we can simplify those complications. It's to compare the stocks and its own historical PE ratio, both in normal and in difficult times. I mean, most of the established company follow their history to some extent. Let's see TCS historical P ratio. If required, please pause it. This is the quarterly TCS earnings per share and it's related P ratio from April 2011 to till date. Left hand side axis is for P ratio and the right hand side one is for earnings per share and the blue bars are P ratio and brown bar is earnings per share. So in normal good times before 2020, on an average TCS earning is around 24 to 26. And after 2020, there was a substantial increase in DIA strength due to the every month huge inflow of money through SIP and also the number of retail participants also increased significantly. Like from less than 2 crore people before 2020 to over 11 crore people now. Thus, the interest and demand in TCS increased substantially. So the average PE value after 2020 is 28 now. Then in a bad time, I mean when the company is not growing due to various global issues, especially in Europe and US, between 2016 to 2018, it dropped to 18 to 20. So considering all those historical terms, I think TCS will trade between 22 to max 30 P ratio on May 1st, 2024. Now let's forecast the future. In a very, very worst case scenario, TCS won't grow at all, which means their earnings per share will be 122. On a normal time, we can expect the earnings to increase 129 and on a very good time, it may increase up to 139. 
If we calculate price for those forward PE ratio and the earnings per share means, then the worst case price will be 2,684 rupees per share. In normal case, it will be 3,612 rupees per share. And if the economy doing good and everyone around the world doing good, then the price might go up till 3,892 rupees per share. Now the price is around 3,200 rupees per share, and the world is around confused state whether are we getting recession or not, kind of. So in today's case on May 1st 2024 from the current price level based on the forward PE ratio the price might increase 8 to 10%. In good case scenario it may increase 20%. If we are happy with those possible return in one year time then we can invest in TCS. And for the one or the other reason if the price drops and moves near 2600 to 2800 I believe it's a bargain buy. Just a disclaimer it's just my opinion i can be wrong don't make investment decision based on this please consult your own financial consultant my purpose here is to discuss how we can connect present pe ratio with a historical one and the forward one now let's look at the nifty it's similar to tcs but instead of one company nifty is made up of different 50 companies with the inclusion of multiple sectors and that's the reason it's a major index that represents the whole country again like any particular stock nifty to have similar earnings per share and pe ratio if required please pause it and have a look this is the pe ratio chart for nifty from 2008 to till date here pink curve is the pe ratio and the green curve is the nifty value anyway all these periods we can divide that into segments like between 2009 to 2011 india's growth time nifty traded between 20 to 25 pe ratio with a average of 23 thus nifty increased from 2500 to over 6000 levels then between 2012 to april 2014 taper tantrum issue those were the really difficult period for india since most of the time the oil price was over 100 us dollars per barrel and it reached the high of near 160 us dollars per barrel Thus, rupee lost its value from around forty to all the way up to sixty-eight. In those difficult times, Nifty traded between seventeen to nineteen with an average of eighteen. Finally, between May two thousand fourteen to till date, present government period. In this, we can divide into further to before March twenty twenty and after April twenty twenty. First, between May two thousand fourteen to March twenty twenty, Indian companies were grown at constant steady good pace. Thus, Nifty's PE ratio was around twenty to thirty range. Here, the average was twenty five. After twenty twenty, first on March twenty twenty, because of the world's craziness, Nifty PE ratio reached the low of eighteen point five. And in the next two two years, Indian companies really had a very good crazy growth. I mean in Jan 2020 Nifty was trading around 12000 with a earnings per share of around 450 and the same earnings per share on May 2022 reached the value of over 800 and Nifty was just around 16500 see earnings increased 450 to 800 almost double but Nifty increased only 12000 to 16500 with a max range 18500 and today june 23rd nifty's earnings were 859 rupees per share and nifty's value is around 18600 the pe ratio is 21.75 so based on all those historical and average information i think in worst case nifty might go till 18.5 pe ratio and to the maximum 23 in the favorable condition as i said when we analyze the tcs now is not the favorable condition rather than the confused state Thus I believe in this way Nifty might trade between 20 to 22. Finally how we can calculate the forward earnings. The answer is really difficult because of its too much complexity. I'm not saying we can't I'm just saying it's difficult. If anyone knows any shortcut please let me know in the comment section. However there are big investment firm like Bloomberg Jeffries who calculate and release those forward earnings. If required please pause and have a look. This is Nifty's forward earnings for FY 2024 and for FY 2025 that Bloomberg and Jeffries released at various point of time in the last year. I got it from internet but the credit goes to Alchemy Capital who compiled this like various point of time in the last one year. 
how much the bloomberg are announcing that they expect the forward pe ratio for nifty as per them now this 859 earnings per share will increase to approximately 975 in the fy 2024 so now the present worst case nifty value like march 2020 18.5 pe ratio is 15890 for 859 earnings per share that value in future in may 2024 the worst case 18.5 will be 18000 i mean for the 975 earnings per share at that time similarly the normal present ratio for the 20 to 22 pe ratio in may 2024 the operating range will be 19500 to 21500 here please note in may 2024 this worst case 18000 and the operating range 19500 to 21500 is applicable only if nifty able to attain the 975 earnings per share if it fails then this will change as well Again disclaimer all this are subjective please don't make any investment decision please consult your financial advisor here i'm just conveying you and my purpose is education only that how we can connect present pe ratio with a historical one and the forward one for both index and stock specific so that's all in this video hope you all got some useful information Please consider subscribing the channel and liking the video so it will help me beat the YouTube algorithm and will also motivate me to do more. Thanks for watching.